All right, welcome back. In this video, we're talking about the Second Amendment and the right to bear arms. You know you can't wait to hear about that. Let's do it. So the Second Amendment. Yeah, I know. The Second Amendment. The one that people can't seem to stop screaming at each other over. We're not going to have any of that in this video. What we want to do is kind of zoom out and see, well, what exactly does the Second Amendment say in the first place? and then just kind of get to how our interpretation of it has changed over time. So let's start with the text of the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment says that a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now, if that's a little perplexing and confusing, well, it's understandable because that is not really a sentence. It's not grammatically correct. So. Our debate starts with what the heck are they trying to say here? One of the main reasons and causes for that debate and that confusion is that it mentions a militia specifically, right? It says that a militia is necessary for people to be free. And then it says that the right of the people to keep and bear arms won't be restricted. So the question here is really, all right, well, do you have a right to bear arms in connection with service in a militia? Or do you as an individual person have a right to bear arms like the second half of the sentence would seem to indicate. So depending on which part of the sentence you give more weight to would heavily influence your response to that question. It's interesting to know that until 2008, so the first 220 years basically since this amendment uh, had been written and passed, the answer was you have a right to bear arms in connection with militia service. So there was that definite limitation. Now, this didn't mean that the government had to take away your right to bear arms. It just meant that they could take away your individual right to bear arms. So you didn't have one as just a person who wants to have a weapon for sport or for hunting or for just because you like to or for self-protection. You did not have that right constitutionally until 2008 in the U.S. Supreme Court case D.C. versus Heller. And this case gives us a brand new interpretation of the Second Amendment that is still the current interpretation today. And that is now that an individual person has the right to bear arms for self-defense. So it does not have to be linked to militia service any longer. Now, I do want to point out, just to touch on, again, that controversy, we're not going to get into the gun control, gun rights debate, that's not what this video is for. But... It is interesting to note that Antonin Scalia, the justice who wrote the majority opinion, he was very specific in this by saying that the federal government does still maintain the right to restrict and to regulate that right to bear arms. So just because there is an individual right to bear arms, it does not mean that it's unlimited. It does not mean that it can't ever be restricted by the federal government because it can be. All right, so make sure you guys check out the McDonald vs. Chicago video, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this issue in the next couple of videos. So until next time, this has been a La Money production. All right, so thanks again for watching this video. If it helped, do me a favor, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to comment down below, what's the right interpretation of the Second Amendment? Should it be an individual right to bear arms like we have currently? Or should it be linked to malicious service as in the old way? Or does the Second Amendment not even matter because it's 200 plus years old? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. See you guys next time.